Hello, I'm Stephanie Andrews. I'd like to tell you briefly about the paper Rita Holden and I have written, Characteristics and Management of Immune-Related Adverse Effects Associated with Ipilimumab, a new immunotherapy for metastatic melanoma. Just a little background. When diagnosed in the early stages, melanoma is highly treatable and associated with good long-term outcomes. However, for patients diagnosed with advanced or metastatic melanoma, the prognosis is much poorer. A new immunotherapeutic agent, ipilimumab, has been approved for the treatment of advanced or metastatic melanoma. It has been shown to significantly improve overall survival in patients. But ipilimumab can also cause immune-related adverse events, or IRAEs, that are likely tied to ipilimumab's immune-related mechanism of action. Our paper discusses the most common IRAEs and how to manage these events so that patients can stay on therapy and hopefully have successful outcomes. Ipilimumab is administered as a 90-minute intravenous infusion at a dose of 3 mg per kilogram every 3 weeks for 4 doses over a period of 12 weeks. The most common IRAEs include toxicities of the skin, gastrointestinal tract, endocrine system, and liver. Less common IRAEs include neurologic and ocular events. Overall, vigilant, prompt intervention, and the use of corticosteroids have been successful in clinical trials to manage IRAEs. Time to onset of IRAEs can vary, but most occur within the first 12-week phase of treatment. However, some can be seen as early as following the first treatment, especially in the case of dermatologic events. Others can occur weeks or even months after the patient completed therapy, especially as seen in the case of endocrine events. When higher grade events occur, ipilimumab may need to be withheld or even permanently discontinued. But in many cases, IRAEs can be successfully managed and patients can continue therapy. In our paper, we review four cases to illustrate the management of four of the most common types of IRAEs that we see in patients. These are immune-related dermatitis, enterocolitis, hepatitis, and endocrinopathy. I had a patient with stage 4 melanoma who received three doses of ipilimumab and presented with symptoms of severe fatigue, headache, and cognitive dysfunction. Even though brain metastasis is the first consideration, Hypophysitis should also be considered in anyone that has received ipilimumab. An MRI of the brain with pituitary cut should be ordered to assess for pituitary swelling, as well as lab work to assess pituitary gland function. This case is one of four presented in our paper, along with more detailed information on the specifics of management of that type of IRAE. To conclude, ipilimumab is a novel, FDA-approved immunotherapy agent for unresectable and metastatic melanoma. Due to its characteristic and distinctive mechanism of action, ipilimumab elicits a number of specific IRAEs. Expedient and careful recognition and monitoring of IRAEs that may occur during treatment with ipilimumab may allow patients to continue to benefit from therapy and optimize outcomes. I hope you find this helpful. Thank you for listening.